So this is the problem with your little soy boys, is you're curling with the prefab barbell, pulling your elbows back as you curl, and not curling heavy enough weight to warrant curling on a barbell, and that's why you've got 14 inch arms like all the fit chicks. Alrighty, here we are, uh, about two weeks since the show uh, was cancelled. Quick update with you guys, I am doing a reverse diet. So when you do diet down for a, a comp or a holiday or a wedding, a photo shoot, whatever it is that you need to do, strategically you need to reverse out and you need to rebuild your calories, your metabolism, dial down the cardio strategically um, over time. Okay, otherwise you'll put on a lot more weight and the wrong weight uh, than you imagine. Okay, I've done it before after comps, I've put on like 11 kilos in seven weeks, sorry, in seven days. I've seen clients do it. Uh, a lot of competitors, if you know anyone that compete, will often do it. They binge eat, they drink alcohol, they go out, they throw courses to the wind, and they end up, you know, 6, 8, 10, 15, 20, 30 kilos over stage weight, which leads into depression. It ruins your metabolism, and it's much, much harder to get off. So I'm slowly reversing uh, my macros at the lowest with 220 protein, 105 carbs, and 52 fats. They are now sitting at about 250 protein, 150 carbs, and 52 fats. So I'm up around 200 calories. I'm slowly reversing out. Uh, today we're hitting arms. I'm getting some performance back in the gym, so we're gonna go nice and heavy today. I'm gonna do uh, an MPT Warrior original uh, workout where I'm gonna curl heavy. I'm gonna do uh, heavy push downs. I'm gonna do uh, heavy incline curls. I'm gonna do heavy lying tricep extensions. I'm gonna do heavy hammer curls. I'm gonna do heavy French press as well. So three exercises for buys, three for tries. Uh, six total working sets, all to failure, all heavy weight, all six to eight rep range uh, I'll be failing in. Uh, and we're gonna give it a crack. Quick one too, I bought it in Core Fury. It's, it's just come in in Australia, it's a pre-workout. It is a game-changing pre-workout, very high stim. A little higher stim than I'm used to, but mate, it is, uh, I've used it this week for two workouts, and it is impressive, super impressive. It's another one from Core Nutritional, Tug Miller, shout out to you again. Uh, if you guys want the link for this, to get it from the only place to distribute this in Australia, it'll be in the description, or maybe if I can get the cameraman to create like a pop-up somewhere, let's get into the workout. Okay, so as per the MPT Supernatural Training System, we do lots of warm-ups to work towards our two top heavy working overload sets. I'm starting on barbell curl. This is my second warm-up working towards my working weight. So this is quite light for me. I'm just really focusing on form, range of motion, movement pattern, and activating those biceps on a nice wide arc on the way up and on the way down. You notice my elbows stay out in front of me. Keep the tension on the bicep. Stay tucked in the entire time. And in my mind, I'm almost supinating my wrist, meaning twisting my pinkies towards my shoulders. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to move the bar, obviously, but just that mental cue helps get the most out of the bicep. So this is warm up set number three. You want to stop pretty shy of failure. Now I get asked this a lot inside our academy for the, the MPT warriors that I'm programming. They'll often ask me how long do you rest in between working sets? And it's a good question. Um, working sets we do anywhere from two to four minutes rest. I like more towards four, especially as the intensity is high and the overload is high. In between warm ups, I'm normally doing about a minute and a half to two minutes. All right, just enough for the muscles to kind of replenish, but not too long for me to get cool and for me to cool down. You'll also notice if you've been watching my channel for a while, I warm up and stay pretty warm through most of the workout. I'm normally wearing pants and a hoodie. I like to keep the heat in. I've been training for a long time and things just work better when they're warm. Uh, I've mentioned this before, I like to treat my workouts like an athletic event, and you would not get on a footy field, soccer field, basketball court, tennis court, any sort of athletic endeavor cold and I treat my workouts the same. You've got to be warm, everything's got to be moving, blood's got to be flowing, and uh, pump has to be in the intended muscles. Okay, warm up set number four. I'll probably get anywhere from four to six reps. Again, stopping shy of failure. I'm really programming these biceps and what's about to come. Get there. Okay, so we're doing the acclimation set here. This is very close to my working weight. And this will determine how much I'm gonna curl today, based on how this feels. 
So acclimation, I'll do anywhere from one to three reps. We're done on our two heavy sets on barbell curl. Freaking killed me. Kept the weight pretty heavy. Almost like uh, cheat curls, right? So there's a fair bit of heaving going, but as you noticed, it was a three second negative and uh, lots, of, um, lots of positive studies on the uh, importance of a slow negative. <laughs> so now we're doing triceps. I am going to do the full warm up again because it is you know, arms as arms, but this is the antagonist to the bicep. So the elbow joint's not warm, the blood is in the bicep. It's not in the tricep yet. So you'll just notice here that my technique's a bit different. I do let the elbows come away from me because I want to get that long head involved. Okay, and the long head of the tricep attaches to the scapula. So in order to stretch it and engage it, the elbow needs to come away from the scapula. If it stays fixed, you're really only doing half reps. You're really only working the short head. And in my experience, when you go heavy, you just overload the tendon. Whereas doing this, letting your elbows come up away from you, you're able to get greater flexion through the arm and more mind-muscle connection. Oh, through the tricep. Okay, so this is warm-up set number two. You'll notice that as I go heavier, I will get into the stance. And this is purely to hold myself down and create a strong anchor and foundation. If I'm standing upright, this weight's okay. But when I go super heavy, it's gonna pull me up and I'm gonna, I'm already MC. Whereas when I'm like this, I'm strong. Oh, can handle more weight and more overload through the tricep. Which, as a natty, equals more gains. Overload, gains. All right, here we are for the acclimation set. So this is the bridge set between the warm-ups and the working. So it's pretty close to my working weight. You'll notice the uh, effort that it takes me to stay on the ground. This set, oh, this set's okay. All righty, working set one. We're gonna go from anywhere for six to 10 reps. Now this chest slap I'm about to do, probably knock the microphone off, is called NLP, Neural Linguistic Programming, and it triggers the nervous system, the mindset, and the psyche, and it's go time. Second heavy set. 
in the off season with a bit more food in me, I'll always fight to keep the weight the same. If I do less rips, that's okay. Keep the overload there. So here we go. Okay, so I'm done with uh, tricep pushdowns. And as you guys would have seen in a previous arm episode, if you watched it, I go bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep. Helps keep the, the pump solid, helps keep everything warmed up, and I find I get better my muscle connection. So we're moving on from heavy pushdowns to incline dumbbell curls. A little stricter, biceps in a stretch position. Let's see how the shoulder goes. Two heavy sets. Shoulder blades back. Alrighty, so I've just finished with two sets on incline dumbbell curls. 10 reps the first one, eight for the second. Now moving back to triceps. So I'm gonna do lying tricep extensions. The difference between a lying tricep extension and a skull crusher is having fixed elbows, which a skull crusher does. Again, in my opinion, loads up the tendon, hurts the elbow joint, only works the short head. Whereas a lying tricep extension, as you'll see in a moment, I'm bringing that humerus and stretching it away from the scapula. Okay, this involves the long head, and when I come up and contract, I'm contracting with all three heads. You can handle more weight, save your joints, and get better mind muscle connection on all muscle fibers through the tricep. This is an acclimation set, because I haven't done this move in a little while. Uh, I'll do anywhere from two to four reps and decide how much I'm gonna do for my two heavy top working sets. Now, I don't have a spotter today, so I'm gonna have to kick it in into position myself, uh, which is okay. Head on the edge of the bench, so you can get full flexion through the arms, feet planted. Christmas. Just like the street lights lit this town, like a fire in a blaze out of burning town. Can't be afraid to leave this town. We got this far, don't know. All right, so we're up to our working sets. We're gonna go pretty heavy here, it's about 60, Seven, 70 kilos overhead. Biggest ba battle with this is staying on the ground. I'm top, I'm, I'm top heavy, as you can probably see. So my feet will come up. That's probably the biggest battle. Uh, but it's time to go. What's the saying? Everybody wants big triceps, but nobody wants to lift no heavy ass weight. Everybody wants to do ropes and pump sets and then wonder why their triceps don't grow. This is how you grow triceps as a natty. Yeah. Oh. 
All right, so we've just finished two sets of lying heavy ass tricep extensions. Now we're going to finish off biceps with some old-fashioned heavy hammer curls. I'm not doing any preacher or isolating stuff today. I'm going super heavy, focusing on the negative, tearing those muscle fibers down and focusing on gains, quantum gains, quantum natty gains. Here we go, two heavy sets. Brachialis muscle here, it's very resilient. It cops a lot through rows, through press, through regular curl, through stabilizing on hack squat, on leg press, leg extensions. So I'm trying to overload it with a number, I'm trying to overload it with heavy enough weight to get maybe four strict curls and then I start swinging. I know the form police are gonna crush me, but it's the best way I've found to overload that brachialis muscle and be able to build, you know, 18, 19, 20 inch arms, depending on when you measure them as a natty. Big tip for you guys. Don't let form get in the way of intensity or overload within reason. All right, so just finished up on hammer curls. and moving into the last exercise of the day. We're gonna do some heavy dumbbell French press. I'm gonna grab it with the old NWO Illuminati grip. And the goal here is to get full flexion meaning that my bicep is stopping my arm from coming any further back. I want to get full, full stretch to the tricep and then be able to drive it up with all three heads. My range of motion will not enable me to keep my elbows tucked into my head like this. Too much pec, too much lat, too much mass. You don't have to. As long as you're not out here pressing, you just bring them in at a comfortable level. So that's a big tip for you form police as well. that say, oh, his elbows are flaring out. If you had a chest like this too, your elbows would flare out too, dickhead. just humbled me very quickly. I thought I'd try 55 kilo. I haven't done over 50 in, shit, have to be 12 months since I started this prep and reverse out of the last one. So I got, what was it? What did I get then? Five and a half reps. Not enough. So sometimes you do have to drop the weight, gentlemen. It's always a fine line. So I'm going to do my second set now with 52 and a half kilos and I'm going to get six as a minimum. Six to eight is my goal, rep range. Here we go. Okay, just got done with an awesome arm sesh. Uh, the increase in carbs has helped me with my strength and energy, my muscle connection, I'm getting good pump again. Not feeling so much pain in the joint, but actually feeling the muscles work a lot better. And my shoulder injury that I had, that was niggling there for a while, has uh, sorted itself out too with the extra calories. So basically what my plan is now that the uh, ICN got canceled, 
is to reverse out, have a really good off season of anywhere from two to four years, put on the size in the legs to match the upper body, improve on the upper body, uh, and then get back on stage and take out both the ICN and the IMBA, probably about 2024, 2025. Uh, and the long-term plan is to not only do it at a national level, but also go overseas and compete in the uh, Natty Olympia as well. So I'll probably redo a YouTube series on that. But in the meantime, we're gonna just keep up with our weekly episodes. I'm gonna fill you guys in on current, current calories, current method, how to reverse out properly, the mindset, all things Natty Gains. So today's session was awesome, pretty happy with it, felt strong. Uh, good mind-muscle connection again, injury sorted, uh, good energy, good focus. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Until next time, stay natty. Hit it. Nah, nah, nah.